are here Moving in our midst I worship you I worship you You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you You are Miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Today, we're glad that you can be here. We're celebrating graduates and Mother's Day and a Festival of the Christian Home. We're glad that you're here with us to worship together today. We give God thanks and praise for the gift of this Easter season and for the opportunity to share worship together. Alleluia. God's name be praised. Amen. Hey, church family. Would you bow your heads in prayer? Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are his sanctuary. Amen.
This scripture reading is from Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5 and 15 and 16. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. My times in, are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. The second scripture reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 5 and 9 through 10. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The last scripture reading comes from John chapter 14 verses 1 and 2. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, an anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, it is all my hope and say. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in a hymn be found. Bless in his righteousness alone, for bless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. This Sunday is the Sunday that we are celebrating our graduates. Um, our high school graduates would be graduating today uh, if they were walking across the stage. And I think there's a virtual bit of graduating going on. And uh, we wanted to celebrate them as well. And so we've got the opportunity for um, our graduates to share just a little bit about what they enjoyed about high school, perhaps a favorite scripture passage. and. Um, to, for us to see them in our cap, their caps and gowns. I know that many of you have had an opportunity to watch our kids grow up, and so this is an important and special time. And although we did not extend the invitation to any of our other uh, students uh, who are potentially graduating 
in this season, I want all of our graduates to know that we honor you and we celebrate uh, what you have gone through in your schooling and your education. And we know that this season of graduation is a little bit strange, but we want you to know that we celebrate you and we give God thanks for the gifts that you have had in uh, the lives of our congregation and in the ways that you are growing up and moving into the world. We give God thanks for, for you, for your parents, for the gift that you've been in our community, and we continue to pray God's blessing be upon you. We give God thanks and praise for all our graduates. Amen. Good morning. Congratulations to our church seniors 2020. We would like to congratulate you and honor you and give you a gift from the church. It is called a gratitude journal. Gratitude is a feeling of appreciation for what one has. It is a feeling of thankfulness for the blessings we have received. Um, the seniors in our church this year are Madeline Jorgensen, Tessa Oliver, Matt Shea, Brody Stenicky, Denise Sianuki, Lakin Wilkins, and Micah Chikue. Congratulations to you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Good luck and God bless. Hi, my name is Madeline Jorgensen and I'm a senior this year. Some of my favorite moments throughout high school happened when I was in school activities. The people and the experiences that I got to go through during high school are what made me who I am today in those activities. My favorite Bible verse is Psalms 91.4 that says, He will cover you in his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. I would like to thank everyone for the support that they've shown me throughout this roller coaster of two months. Um, and as I await to see what my future holds, I am excited to see what God has in store for me. Hello guys, I'm Micah, the exchange student from Spain. And um, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys to let me hang out with you every Sunday. I just had super fun, like I learned a lot of things and this year I'm going to college, I think I'm going to Madrid and I will study criminology or nurse. So I'm so happy that I have learned that stuff with you, with God and I just want to say thank you to everyone because you were super cute and cool with me. We get a lot of interesting messages out of our scriptures for today, especially when we place them in the context that we're sitting in, because it's a, a, a collection of grief and fear and assurance. And I think that that fits very well with where we are in our society today as we come on this day that is a day that we usually fill with celebrations, whether whether we're celebrating our, our mothers or we're celebrating our graduates or we're putting them together. Uh, my birthday is around this time and I often celebrate my birthday on the same day. And so I'm used to this being a season of celebration. Um, and in our world today, celebrating is a little bit more complicated than it has been in the past. And, and we have a lot of people who are uh, not really feeling very celebratory. We have many of us are grieving the fact that celebrations are not taking place in the way that we had anticipated. And so as I read our scriptures for today, all of those confusing combinations of things were put together in there. And, and I just want you to know that I understand the, the complexity of, of what's happening in our lives. Um, even though I live alone, um, it's, it's real interesting to watch and to hear the stories of how people are choosing to celebrate or feeling like they can't participate in celebrations. And so today I invite us to think about these scripture passages. We have our psalm for today, 
and the psalm that uh, comes in, in, and speaks about God being present, God being our refuge, God being our fortress, our place of protection. And uh, that's something that is particularly powerful in this season when perhaps we're feeling a little bit uh, set aside and stranded in strange and unusual places. As we were talking about this scripture passage at uh, Coffee and Conversations today, somebody asked the question of, so this rock, is this about being anchored? And I said that, yes, that is very much a part of it, that uh, rocks were used as anchors for many generations. Um, and so it is important for us to think about that. But I also think the power of the imagery that's there that talks about uh, rocks as building stones uh, can be really helpful for us. We think about that in the strength of our, our church building. Uh, we think about that as we think about God as being our sanctuary and our safe place. Early in this season, we, we talked about uh, uh, worry stones and stones that we could carry in our pocket and that we could hold on to. And that's kind of that strength and solidity that uh, we have, that we find present in our song for today. But it's also part of the power of putting that passage with the passage from John that speaks about God being, um, God having this place, this home that, that has room for all of us, or that there are many homes in my father's dwelling place, and that all of us can find a place where God welcomes us home. And so here we come back to this idea of Mother's Day and the celebration of the Christian home and an opportunity to think about what it is like to be loved it, with the grace and the power of God that is God as holy parent, God as refuge, God as safe sanctuary, God as the one who sustains and nurtures us even through these most difficult times. And so we are people who are grounded in, anchored to, surrounded by the love of God. And yet, this is also a season when we remember that um, part of loving one another as we live and as we grow is setting each other free so that uh, we can continue to grow into what God has called us to be about. And so as we think about our graduates and uh, the challenges that it has for being both a graduate and a parent of a graduate in this season, there is that sense that we have shaped and formed our children so that they know where there is safety and nurture and home and yet we can set them free. Part of the mixed messages that I'm hearing in this season is, is that even our kids who have been uh, released into the world, who have gone off and, and uh, created lives for themselves, are feeling that uh, longing to be home. And that's another bittersweet thing of this particular Mother's Day, is that many who would normally be spending the day with their mothers are not. And so we remember the gift of being together even across many miles and that's one of the gifts of this particular technical uh, practice that we have of Zoom and YouTube and uh, Facebook Live, all of the different ways that we can share and be with one another. I think we're looking at some new metaphors for who God is in our life. God as the ultimate connector, God not only as that rock that is our salvation, but also that uh, electronic, electronic connection that keeps us together and allows us to practice our love even in times of, of separation. We come to be God's people to worship and remember that God is ever present in our lives. No matter how lonely, no matter how isolated, no matter how endangered we feel, we have a God that is present in all times and in all places. God is with us. Through our internet connections, through our 
telephone calls through the letters and cards that we send, whether we're celebrating a graduation or we're celebrating our mothers, or whether we are just thinking of one another. And we share the good news of our lives, the good news of our faith, and we can continue to be the people of God who proclaim all of the different ways that God is part of who we are and part of how we share ourselves in the world. Today, I celebrate our graduates. Today, I celebrate mothers. Today, I celebrate all those of you who have helped to make our homes places of safety and sanctuary in honor and love of God. Today we come as God's people, celebrating that God is present for us, with us, in us, and through us. Thanks be to God. Amen. On this day, we have an opportunity to offer up our celebrations and our thank yous, but we also have an offer to opportunity to offer ourselves before God, and we have the chance to um, bring our financial offerings as well that help keep this ministry up and going so that we can continue to be God's people in this time and place. And so at this time, I invite you to listen to the gift of music as uh, you offer yourself to God and as you give, whether through um, our, our, our app that's called Givelify or whether you uh, write a check and send it to us in the mail or ask your bank to send some uh, uh, some of your funding to us. However you do that, we appreciate your gifts and we give God thanks for them. Thank you. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the many gifts that you have given us in our lives. Even those moments that we're not really quite sure how to call them gifts. We recognize that uh, there's much teaching and learning that happens even in the challenges of our lives. We'd ask that you bless the gifts that we bring this day. Bless us and our lives that uh, others can see in us and the work that we do, the power of your love poured out through us and in us. Bless these gifts, multiply them that there is enough to do all that you call us to do as we continue to be your people in this time and in this place. We give you thanks and praise in the name of Christ, who taught the earliest disciples to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Opportunities for involvement continue to exist even in these days of, uh, of our separation, physical separation from one another. I would like to remind you that uh, on May 12th, this coming Tuesday, uh, it is the uh, Nebraska primary. We are a polling place and, it, uh, and the church will be open for this. Um, we hope that many of you have already mailed in your ballots. Um, but, but Nebraska is continuing to vote uh, in polling places. So we will be open for that. Uh, the only doors that will be open are the wooden doors, the ones on the north and the south side of the church. We'd ask that you um, please be uh, careful and uh, stay separate from one another at, at least six feet. I would strongly encourage all of you who come out to vote to please wear um, a mask. Uh, it is not for your protection, but it is to uh, protect those who are here, and particularly those who have agreed to be poll workers. This is, uh, this is a, a big commitment in any season, but particularly this year, our people who have been willing to be poll workers um, are very much people that we want to make sure we take care of and protect. So please, um, if you are coming out, or when you are coming out to vote in person on May 12th, please be kind and thoughtful of those who are working uh, that for us, if you would, please. Um, again, that will be Tuesday, and we would invite you to be careful with one another as you come out to vote. Uh, there are other opportunities around our community to uh, care for one another. At the very least, please hold one another in prayer. Our bishop has invited us to pray the Lord's Prayer daily at noon, and it's one of those ways that we can remember just how connected we are in the love of God and in the communities that we worship together in. We come and we give God thanks and praise as we worship even in this somewhat different way. We remember that uh, Christ said that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, he would be present, and so we celebrate that today as we come and we worship, we give thanks, and we celebrate. Good morning. Please bow with me for our closing prayer. Our Father, we want to thank you for the gift of life and the gift of this beautiful spring. Lord, you say where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in their midst. Well, we, our midst is very crazy right now and we don't know what's going on, but we know that you have our path and our plan, and we thank you for that. Thank you for the church and the leaders you've given us, and thank you for allowing us to have the means to gather, even though we may be by ourselves, our hearts are gathered together with you and with each other, our church family. Thank you for allowing us to have this place to feed on your word. Let grace and peace be upon our lives even as we uh, go through our days and we are in different destinations. Let everything we have learn bear fruit in our lives so that your light can shine upon us and they can and you and your word glorifies 
us through you. Please be with us as we continue in this COVID-19 and please continue to walk with us. Uh, give our hearts peace and we just want to thank you for the grace in our lives. In your name, amen. our time together, I invite you to remember that God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right here beside you, raising your very life from death, guiding and directing your path. And so I invite you to acknowledge your fear and your worry and know that it is as true and as holy as any other feeling, including joy and hope and love. Take heart, my friends. This is the heart of our matter. Go forth in the peace and the love of Christ, celebrating the love of God, and being part of the transformation of the whole world. Amen.